It's Confident Computing number 864. How should I back up my email? Hi everyone, Leo Notenboom here for askleo.com with this week's video summary of my emailed newsletter, Confident Computing. If you're not getting it in your inbox every Tuesday, go visit askleo.com slash newsletter and sign up today. So I talk about backing up a lot. I do um, almost hopefully too, too much, not too much anyway. Bottom line is that even though I talk about it so much and people have been improving getting their computers backed up, there's still one gaping hole in many people's backup strategies, and that is email, especially if you're using online email like Outlook.com or Gmail.com or Yahoo or any of the others. There's a very good chance you're not backing it up and you should. Or at some point, you could be very, very sorry. This week's featured article, How Should I Back Up My Email, walks you through the steps that you should take to back up that very, very important resource. Also this week, protecting yourself from other computers on your network sounds fine. I mean, especially if you've got kids, you want to make sure that's something that they do accidentally, of course, on their machine doesn't impact yours. But in recent years, it's become a much broader topic because of the Internet of Things. There are so many different devices connected to your home network. You might need to take an extra step or two to protect your computer. Volts and amps, amps and volts. I get this question so often. Basically, what happens is people have lost a charger or a power supply and they want to replace it. And the original is no longer available or exorbitantly expensive. The solution, of course, is to get a compatible power supply. But what does that mean, especially for your random devices like your phone or a laptop? Well, there are some things that are A, confusing and B, very important to get right. Can I use a charger with the same voltage but different amperage covers exactly what you need to pay attention to. There's a good chance that this week's email newsletter will actually land in many people's spam folders. And the reason is simple. It uses the word porn. The article, Does Getting Porn Spam Mean You've Been Surfing Porn Sites?, discusses a common concern when people start receiving porn spam. In fact, it's often someone's significant other or spouse or girlfriend or boyfriend that notices that their friend is getting porn spam and they're wondering, does that mean they've been surfing porn? Well, the answer is, it's a little bit more complicated than that, but generally they're not related. And finally, in articles this week, pagefile.sys. It takes up a lot of space. What's it all about? Could you get rid of it? Well, the answer is, as so many answers are, it depends. There definitely are scenarios where you can free up that disk space on your hard disk. What is pagefile.sys and can I delete it goes into the details. We did have a TEH podcast this week. Gary and I talked about what it means to own something and how many of the things we think we own, we don't. And of course, it starts with software that we are so-called licensing from the manufacturer, but it's actually a much broader topic than that. I hope you find something useful or interesting or maybe a little entertaining in this week's newsletter. As always, glad you're here. I'm Leo Notenboom. This is AskLeo.com. Thanks for watching.